The painting is The Triumph of Valor Over Time by Giambattista Tiepolo. Our main reason for treating it was because the stretcher wasn't, wasn't working properly and uh, we needed to retention it so it looked more like a fresco painting. Put a new stretcher on it with the help of our colleague from Italy. Then the other aspect of it was to was cleaning it, clean it just with swabs and distilled water and remove the overpaint which was also soluble in that because it was a, it was a watercolour paint. Uh, so we cleaned the surface and cleaned off the discoloured off retouchings. Now we're in the process of uh, in-painting uh, or retouching. So what, what we're doing is we're in-painting this area at the bottom and you can see that it's relatively relatively even now. Here you can see on the, the photograph before there were a bunch of losses around here and then when you look closely it's, uh, it's you know, resolved but for uh, really close examination you'll see that, that that's, uh, there's actually a differentiation in the brush strokes and, uh, and in the surface structure so you can actually tell that it's a restored area rather than, or, rather than a, uh, an original area. You know, some restorers use uh, traditional, traditional paints, uh, but um, they might work with oils where they drain out some of the medium. But you know, grinding your own pigments on a project of this scale is a pretty arduous prospect. So, so you can start with these little small damages and turn them back. Watercolour changes colour as it dries, so you have to sort of normally try it out a couple of times to get it right. And then you paint with, basically we're painting with tiny, tiny brush strokes, um, so that you get a sort of differentiation between the original and the restoration. And we're also trying to just paint on the damage, not paint at all on the original. You know, he's using a lot of ochres and siennas and umbers and things on this painting so it's, it's kind of nice because it's a relatively straightforward palette to, to work with and, um, and it's kind of forgiving as well because the surface of the painting because it's sort of a you know it's a plaster surface it's quite it's quite forgiving it's quite um, there's quite a lot of uh, variation across the surface so that also helps you to work relatively quickly so I'm optimistic Around the back here, you see these sort of grey lines here. That's where that's a real indentation where the contours of the figure were drawn in. And you can see a nice, this is a nice change here where his leg was actually this leg was once conceived further back, but he decided that he would paint it pulled up a little bit further forward. And in fact, I think he's actually done that in the drawing stage because you've got a contour here, but then you've got this other correction here. And that's another thing, that type of change kind of speaks to the to Jean Battista because it's really an artist really thinking about improving a design. And often if it's somebody just working from somebody else's design, they'll they'll do that pretty slavishly. Another thing you can see here is this is probably one of the giornate, which is which are the um, the giornato is what an artist could paint in a day, because obviously the fresco has to be painted in wet and so they plaster up an area for, for one day and then paint into it and, and um, then the next day they'll plaster up the subsequent area and paint into that and what you can see is you see a difference in the surface structure and a slight ridge going around here and that's the edges of one of those uh, day areas that would have been painted. The, uh, but before, there was so much overpaint over this face, it came up over the lips and it made them look more damaged, it came up over the eyes and gave them heavy, uh, heavy, heavy eyelids and, uh, and now it, it just, you see so much more of the artist's, you know, brush strokes and the, and the expression of the, of the various figures that it really improves it. Should, scholars should be able to see where there's some um, in painting, but for the average person looking at the painting, they, they should be able to find a way of looking at it where the where the damages don't leap out of them and, and where they're not really disturbing. So what you get is when you do the strapping, you take off the very sort of top millimeter or so of the painting, and it leaves the synopia and it leaves the indentations where the where the draftsmanship was inscribed into the wet plaster. And so we kind of left a lot for a restorer to to go on and um, uh, you know include color, 
drawing and, and the, the forms. And so um, it was actually restored by, by a restorer in, in the early 1950s, I believe, who had also worked on uh, Leonardo's Last Supper. It's a celebration of a member of the Porto family, and it's, a, it's really a triumph of his valor over, over time. It's going to be going in in the middle of April, and uh, so just in time for the opening. So, God willing.